Okay, pause and copy. Okay, we're going to talk about something called a basis, and the plural being bases. Um, okay, let's look at this most basic example in R2. Uh, maybe I want to say V is R2 in this case. So this set B is independent. I know that because 1, 0, 0, 1 has a pivot for every column. You know, say since this matrix has a pivot for every column and span of B is equal to R2 since uh, same matrix has a pivot for every row. So this was discussed in 1.4 and this was discussed in 1.7. Anyways, this ZB is independent and it, uh, we'd say the span of it equals R2, or we say B spans, we'd say B spans R2. I could also say that. So what does this mean? Well, it means that um, the way I think of it is that the span of B is all of R2. So this set B, in some sense, is enough to cover all of R2. So that's how I, th I think of this one as being uh, B is enough to cover R2. That's how I think about it. Now, independence says to me, now this is not math here. What I'm writing here is not math. It's just a, uh, you know, an interpretation to maybe help you digest this. Independence means that um, it isn't too much. Um, B isn't too much. Okay, what I mean by that is that um, is that um, there isn't any extra um, vector in here. You know, I think you agree that if I were to insert another vector, say, uh, 2, 1, okay, that would be, in some sense, extra. I don't need it. I don't need this 2, 1, right? I don't need it to have the span of B equal R2. Okay, so that's how I think about it. Is independence, in this case, ensures that I don't have too much. And... Um, this span bit ensures that I have enough. Okay, so that makes my set B in a sense kind of perfect. It's just enough, but not, not too much, not too much. Okay, so this is how we're going to define a basis. So we're going to say, I'll give you a definition in a second. We're going to say a basis for V is a set that is in V. It's a set in V that is both independent and spans V. And the idea here is that we have some kind of perfection appearing here. So there's my definition. Um, B, which is equal to, well, we'll just write some vectors here. B, uh, uh, N, who cares, is a basis 
for a vector space or subspace V if um, well first of all you need B to actually you know, be a subset you know these vectors have to actually be in the vector space V or it doesn't make sense and one B is independent and two span of B is all of V. Okay, so we use this for a vector space V. We can also use it for a subspace H if you wanted to. So we're defining the word basis. So basis is a singular and bases would be a plural. So let's try another one, say B1, which is equal to one zero, negative one, negative two, is also a basis for R2, since uh, same reason, has a pivot for every column and every row. Okay, so I'm going to do a series of examples to help you get a feel for this. So let's move on to R3. It's called B uh, um, so this is blank basis for R three. So what do you think? What do you think? Well, it is not, right? Because you're going to have a problem. Um, so my reasoning would be, sure, these are independent, but they don't span R3. Uh, does not have a pivot for every row. Therefore, span of B is not equal to all of our three. It is some subset, we say proper subset, meaning it's not the whole thing. Maybe put the word since here to. Have my notes make a bit more sense. OK, what else? What else? What else? Let's move on to a more abstract setting. Not abstract, but um, less familiar. OK, let B is equal to uh, one. Um, bapidi boo, bapidi boo one, t squared, two minus three, t squared. And the vector space in question is polynomials of degree at most two. So 
the question here is B, a basis for V. So <clears throat> how should we approach this? Well, let's start with number one. Is it independent? Well, how can I determine that? Well, I can take, I have to go all the way back to the definition of independence. So I write down this linear combination equal to zero, and I ask, does this have a non-trivial solution? I mean, for A, B, C, can I find an A, B, and a C? Not all zero. That make this equation true. Um, just by inspection, I can see that um, I can, right? You know, I got one and I got T squared. And here I have two times one. And here I have minus three times T squared. So just by inspection, we say, we say um, you can get 2 times 1 plus negative 3 times t squared plus, uh, we'll just take 1 for c. And it does equal 0. So a non-trivial solution exists. So what does that mean? It means it is dependent. So it cannot be a basis. And I'll say four, P, two. I'm missing an S here. Okay, another example. How can I, I'm going to do an example where I kind of modify this one and fix, fix the problem. Let's turn that uh, T squared, the first T squared into a uh, just a T. Okay, this will work. This will work. Um, independence. <clears throat> so what you do is you take this linear combination equal to zero, and you demonstrate that A, B, and C must all be zero. So how do you do that? Well, you say, you say, well, let's collect like terms, A plus 2C plus BT minus 3C T squared is equal to zero. Now, I'm not sure how you did partial fractions back in Cal 2. But you can think of this uh, as being kind of like what you did back then. Okay, this 0 is equal to 0 plus 0t zero plus 0t zero squared. So therefore, this coefficient must be the same as this one. 
this coefficient is the same as this one. And this coefficient is the same as this one. So taking the green ones, I get minus 3c is 0, so c is 0. And then taking the blue ones, I get uh, b is equal to 0. And then taking the red ones, I get a plus 2c is 0. And uh, I already know that c is 0, so a is also 0. Okay, just quickly, this uh, red, blue, green thing I'm doing here, why am I allowed to do that? Well, the assertion here, when I write down this equation, what I'm, I am asserting is that this polynomial on the left is always zero, no matter which t I plug in. Okay, so that, just realizing that that is my assertion, allows me to make uh, these conclusions here. Um, so it's independent. Now, it does it span. Oh, this is uglier. Well, span's going to be a bit ugly for now, but we'll just grind it out. How can I determine if span of B is equal to all of P? Um, hmm, how should I go about that? Well, it's going to get messy, no matter which way. So, let's start at the beginning. Okay, certainly, span of B is a subset of P2. That's clear enough, right? It's the span of some elements of P2. So I need to show that the other way around is also true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to prove that if you take any element here, it must also be here. So let P be in P2. So that implies that P is equal to, um, well, it's like a constant term plus, we'll say E, E is a bad choice, but oh, well, ET plus FT squared. It has to have that form, right? Now, um, does this equal um, I want to see if this is in the span, right? I want to see if this item is in the span of B. What is B? B is, B, B, B is the B is this set here. So I want to see, does my does this P down here, does it equal a linear combination of these guys? So I'm going to try to sort that out. A linear combination of 1 T and 2 minus 3 T squared. Well, let's see. So I'll just try to do it. We'll just go set it equal and see what happens. Do, 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 do. Is it equal to uh, something times 1 plus something times t plus something times 2 minus 3 t squared? So 
So maybe I'll say more specifically, let's see if this is consistent. I'm meaning, uh, can I find A, B, and C? So I do the same thing I did above. I'm going to collect like terms. So if this were to work, I would need uh, A plus 2C to equal D. Then B would have to equal E. And minus 3C would have to equal F. Okay, so I need this to be consistent. So when I say consistent, let me repeat, I'm, I'm thinking of A, B, and C as being my kind of X, Y, Z I usually use when I have a system of equations. So I put this into a matrix. I get 1, 0, 2, D. That is my first equation. Okay, you know, this is like my A column, my B column, and my C column. Next one is 0, 1, 0, E. And I get 0, 0, minus 3, F. And there we have it. Yes, consistent, right? OK, so what does this tell me? A bit tedious, but therefore, P is in the span of B. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what have I proven? I have proven that um, since P here is anything, is absolutely any polynomial in P2, I've proven that any polynomial in P2 is in span B, which tells me that P2 is a subset of span B. And therefore, P2 actually equals span B. Um, because earlier I noted that P2 uh, obviously contains span B. Okay, so my reasoning here is that if P2 is in span B and span B is in P2, how can that possibly be true? Well, only if they're equal. Okay, so what am I doing? Uh, okay, so I've proven one and two. Therefore, B is a basis for you too.